Hi everybody, let's talk about the slow unison etude. Take a look at the key signature. We have one flat, this is B flat, and that's first valve on the trumpet. Our time signature is 6 8. That means that there are 6 8 notes in every measure. If you take a look at measure 15, this is 1, 2, 3, the fourth line down, you can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 8 notes. Now, knowing this, will help you with your counting on some of these measures that seem more difficult. Now, moderato, if you look at the top, it says moderato. Your eighth note is 104 to 112. I got my metronome set for 104. And this is the eighth note. So what you ought to know about the eighth note going by is your quarter notes are worth two of them. So you're gonna hold your quarter notes out twice as long as you're used to because there are two eighth notes and a quarter note and this is the eighth note beat. If you look at measures 21 to the end, you can see that we're dealing with eighth notes. Da, da, da. And the bottom eighth note is tied to the next eighth note. Watch how this is played. So, those are eighth notes going by. Every eighth note gets a beat. And the very last note is a dotted quarter note. And I've held that three counts, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Let's look back at the top. When you count the piece off in your head, when you're just starting off, it's helpful, I think it's helpful to count off the piece. It solidifies the time and how you're feeling it. When you're counting it off, you're going to count one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> First note is an eighth note, so it gets one beat. And by the second beat, you're on the second note, which is a quarter note. Two eighth notes and a quarter note. We're going to hold it for two counts. So listen again. One, two, three, four, five. Every quarter note gets two beats. In fact, if you're used to playing in four, four, or three, four, or two, four time, all your rhythms are going to be twice as long as you're used to, okay? So let's take this line by line and maybe talk about some of the things to watch out for. Measures three and four go like this. You really want to watch out for your D naturals, that you're kicking the slide out, tuning your D naturals, and your C sharps. Oftentimes you'll see the C sharps right next to the D natural. C sharp is one, two, and three. You wanna kick your slide out even a little bit further than you do for D natural, okay? In measure four, we see those two flags on top of the note. Those are 16th notes, and those are twice as fast as eighth notes. So if eighth notes are going by one, two, three, four, five, six, your 16th notes are twice as fast. One and two and three and, okay? So measure four, our quarter note gets two counts. And our 16th notes are twice as fast as eighth notes. When you look at measure five, you see there's a tiny little note there, the B flat. That small note is called a grace note. Listen to how it's played. You see how it's just a quick little insert right before the A? You want to put grace notes in before the next beat. So it takes a little bit of time away from the note to the left. Notice I play the B flat right before the downbeat that the A comes in on. Now, you can help yourself out when you practice this. Try practicing without the grace note to get the rhythm down. and then work the grace note in after. Measure seven has more 16th notes. And really pay attention to your dynamics. Whether you're day crescendoing or crescendoing, make a big deal out of it. Make sure it's noticeable to your audience. You're also going to want to pull your tuning slide out for measure seven.
is your eight, we have a dotted quarter note. If a quarter note is two eighth notes long, the dot adds 50% or half of the value of the note next to it. So those two eighth notes are held for a third eighth note with the dot next to it, so we're holding it for three counts. Let me play that again at seven. At A, this is measure nine, there's another grace note there, it's played the same way, right before the downbeat. And then 11 and 12. 12, we have more 16th notes. Listen to how that sounds. To help some of my students remember the counting, uh, at measure 11, I tell them that it's similar to the Beauty and the Beast song. Right, and then the 16th notes come after. And measure 12, it's important to know how long to hold the dotted eighth note. It's one and a half eighth notes long. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, and three, and one, two, when you're holding these notes. At, let's see, measure 13 and 14, use the crescendo to get all the way to the top of the note. Think about blowing farther as you're going for those higher notes. And when I mean blowing farther, think about when you're blowing with your lips. When you're trying to blow farther, like literally farther, you can look at the wall in front of you and try to blow your air as far as you can. You usually tighten from your corners inward. So if you're not blowing very far, you might use this much of your corner muscles to blow the air forward. But when you're going to an F, you might bring it in a little bit more to really push the air a long way out. Notice that rehearsal marker B, this is measure 17 and 18, the rhythm is the same as measures 19 and 20. Can we play it again with the pickup? And then we're at measures 21 to the end which we went over earlier in the beginning. So watch your dynamics, watch your rhythms, and you know, you can go back, you can listen to this, rewatch it for extra tips. Um, and be sure to shape your phrases. It doesn't always tell you to do it, but take a look at the first phrase, the first musical sentence. It doesn't always tell you or indicate what to do with your dynamics, but generally as the line goes up, you're going to want a crescendo, and as the line goes down, you're going to want a decrescendo. So you can experiment with dynamics just a little bit, and it's usually a good idea to follow the rule of thumb. As you ascend, you get louder. As you descend, as you go down, you generally want to get softer. If you have any further questions, I'm a private lessons teacher. Feel free to ask about trumpet lessons, or leave a comment below. All right, thank you very much. Bye.